Hello and welcome to Must Play for this, the third week of July. Are we third week of July? Oh my God, time is flying. This year. I'm Mark Sanamatino and this is the Must Play podcast, our chance to chat to you every week at 8 o'clock on a Wednesday night about all things gaming, film, technology, frankly, anything we want to chat about. Absolutely anything. Julian Price is next to me. David is next to him. We're back. Fish has returned. <laughs> and Mason. Hey, and Mason. here too. After a very disappointing week where Fish uh, has spent most of it crying over the fact that New South Wales destroyed the Maroons. Ah, uh, they didn't destroy them, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> lost. It doesn't matter if you lose by an inch or a mile, you still lost. It's true. The wise words of Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> He's back uh, just to cure his depression with some giveaway goodness because we have got plenty to give to you, our loyal viewers, this week. Of course, Must Play is sponsored by Moondog, but our friends at Disney always hook it up with, hook us up with the goods particularly when their new movies come out the lion king hit cinemas this week in fact was it out today Jules? today you can mm. go and see it we saw it last night at a preview screening at imax we'll give you our thoughts in just a second but you can see part of the giveaway pack in front of us we've got a drink bottle coffee cup uh, a notebook it also comes all in a backpack we'll be giving that away by the end of the episode what are the rules for that boys what do we want to do like how do they win i want you to make as much noise as possible Tag your friends, share the post. Not literal noise. We don't want you to start screaming. You can. In you can make a video uh, screaming about the fact that you want to win this prize mm -hmm. and share it with us. Every little bit helps. Get creative. That's what we're saying. If you do share, tag people at the end of the episode. We will take everyone who got involved and pluck out a winner for this prize pack. We also have stuff for the release of the Dumbo Blu-ray. Of course, the live-action film came out first this year. I think it was Disney's first of four. Well, first of three, three so far this year. Yeah, um, the, the remakes. Yeah. Yes, of the remakes. Of course, The Lion King is the mm -hmm. latest one. Can I pick that up on Blu-ray You and can. digital? We have got the Blu-ray, a hat, uh, two hoodies as well as bags to give away. We have two of those prize packs and we'll let you know how to win those a little bit later on in the show. All yeah. the goodies. So start commenting, tag your friends. Uh, if you want to win, let us know. That would be great. Someone's already asking... Adam Pether, is he related to you, Fish? Yeah, that's my brother. He's asking, can I win that dope Stranger Things hoodie? <laughs> uh, you probably can. I can get you I can tell you where I bought it from. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if there's anything we learned over the past couple of weeks, it's things that streamers either wear or bathe in can be very lucrative online. That's true, and so I, I'm sure I've got quite a seductive following. This might be your chance. <laughs> Sorry, Adam, I don't know if you... He's into that sort of thing. <laughs> okay, great. Good to have the confirmation. <laughs> Sh Sean's asking if we have a moon dog giveaway. Listen, we will spare one for you. If yeah, Sean, if you come along to the podcast... But you've got to make enough noise. If you edit <laughs> something for us, we'll give you a can, all right? Um, we want to chat about The Lion King first because Jules and I just saw it last night. And look, don't I worry, Fish, it. I know you haven't seen it yet. It's, seen it tomorrow night. It's very hard to spoil a movie that we all saw 25 yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's but essentially a, a copy of the original. It's well, that's good. I'm excited to see what the verdict is. Like, it looks great. Mm. It sounds great. Is it great? Well, I think the thing for me, walking out, I was actually surprised because I went in a little bit of a cynic. Yep. I thought yep. making these hyper-realistic looking animals speak is going to be really jarring. Yep. But I've got to say, the visual fidelity was just so good. It was so good throughout the entire film that I was almost distracted by the fact that I was looking... I, I completely forgot that I was looking at a CG image. For okay. The fact that they've yeah, made yeah. this in a computer just blows my mind. Mm. And the story is as good as it ever was. I think yeah. the visuals certainly help. I think the, the last fight between Simba and Scar looks a million times better than it did Whoa. in the original Things 1994 film. Um, and I don't know about you, Jules, but I thought the acting was pretty good right throughout as well. Acting was all right. I mean, there were a few moments where... The voice acting, I mean. i got to say, Seth Rogen and Billy's... What's his last name? Feinlich or Erzner or something Very, like. very we'll funny. They make a great team as Tony mm. Pumba. I was so glad when Seth Rogen got the Pumba role. He like, is he, absolutely perfect. It's so right. typecast, but so perfect. <laughs> um, I, Billy, so I, is I, it Billy a, Eichner. Yep. So is it, is it a matter of, like, the way I saw it when I was watching the trailers, because I was quite jarred by the the hyper realistic mm. animals as well they're not these cuddly little Simba and well he still is kind of cuddly yeah. oh he's super thing. cute but like you know when they grow up they're not it's not the cartoon that I remember mm. but they're I, still ferocious lions true but I is it like the 
you're saying the acting was really good. Like, mm. so the performances, did they win you over? Did they bring you into uh, the characters so much that you you lose the, oh, this is hyper-realistic and you start to see them as their characters? Look, when I say the acting was good, I think the voice acting was good. Obviously, yeah. they've pushed into hyper-realism and as a result, we have sacrificed a bit of like the animation you know, the 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 character the, that you um, see in a cartoon because yeah, yeah, you can't have yeah. a a super real looking lion be shocked or a warthog look anything like yeah. Pumbaa actually did in the cartoon. And, and there's no Hawaiian hula Timon. Like, how do you do that? They do something fun with that, though. And they that's, do. I won't that's what I liked. There's obviously a lot of limitations that this new style brings in, but I think generally they handle it with aplomb. Mm. Um, I think the one song... Uh, I just can't wait to be king. Is the one that sort of suffers the most from uh, oh, that setback. That's quite a big, um, like animated extravaganza. Yeah, I mean, there's the original. There's like. giraffes standing on top of an elephant, standing yeah. on top of a hippopotamus. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's... you mean they didn't do that? No, oh. unfortunately, <laughs> they don't. I mean, it's still CGI, guys. Come on, mm. we can do this. I must say, the only <laughs> character that I thought while he was speaking, this doesn't look right, is Zazu the bird. Yeah, he does look weird. There's no animation of lips, obviously. Yeah, so it's just yeah, like a yeah. beak doing ah, this, ah, and yet we're supposed to believe he's, you know, pronouncing yeah. the letter M. Like I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, it was really good. I, I quite enjoyed it. I'd still I'd recommend if you're a Lion King fan to go see it. I think kids will really enjoy it as well. They have lost talking about the um, the emotive nature of characters' faces. The two biggest sufferers are Rafiki, the monkey. Mm. He sort of plays a more mm. of a wise uh, African figure in that a lot of his dialect is in African tongue mm. as well, oh. as well as the hyenas. So they've re there's not just really the three main ones this time mm. around. There's like a whole pack of them. You have a female lead, and then uh, the two, which are played by Keegan Michael Key and Eric Andre, are mm. sort of this tag team duo who have their own jokes it is quite funny but mm. they don't have that expressiveness that I know the, what you the mean. previous like, ones did those characters that you're mentioning are like the comedy relief of this film yeah. besides Timon and Pumbaa obviously so that's interesting um, well look I, I don't expect it to topple the original the original mm. has a nostalgia factor to it that will never be beat for me and I, I was thinking about this today about the um, the Disney remakes the way I look at them because I love those originals so much it's kind of like going and seeing a stage show set on your favorite sh movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, oh, look what they did! Like this is it's it's seeing it in a different way. You still love the movie, the original movie, the most, and that's exactly the way that's I've right. seen. It's Dumbo. not going to make you not like the original. Yeah, yeah. If like, anything, it'll make you res respect it and love it more. Yeah, which yeah. is kind of what I took from the Lion King. Mm. Um, watching it, the the nostalgia factor was still there, but it was more. I know what's happening next. I know what's happening next. Mm. You can predict. You can predict the whole mm. thing as you'd expect. You knew what was happening next, but the thing I really liked was that you got to see how they went about doing it. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I think the the, the climax in this film is much better. I, yeah. will, I will actually say that. I think they okay. they nailed that. I definitely believe that um, Timon is better in this film. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk, so I think uh, that this this version of Timon and Pumbaa is actually better. In fact, they yeah. reminded me a lot more of a, a bickering couple, yeah. uh, which was great because okay. I went and watched it with my fiance, who ad we were literally seeing each other in certain things that they were saying. So it was <laughs> it was horrible. At which the end, one of it, were she you? goes, "You're yeah, Timon, right?" Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, I, don't, I feel bad for calling you a pig, but <laughs> were you Pumbaa? <laughs> 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 Oh, anyway, no. we had a bit of a laugh. Let us know if you want to go and say. see it. And if you want to win this awesome prize pack, don't forget to make as much, not literal noise. No. Social, social media, media noise. noise. Share this post. Tag your friends. Get it We've out got there. drink bottles, coffee cups, notebooks, backpacks. We got it all, So mate. much to give away. We got, we got what you need. Away. We got what you need. <laughs> we'll look it sounded really you. creepy. You're you... supposed to be. I'm wearing a leather jacket. You know, that's how it is. <laughs> I was about to say, are you giving away Lion King paraphernalia or slinging cocaine over <laughs> there? Anyway. Whatever you need, man. And if you're lucky, maybe I'll take this off. Uh, while we're here, we want to read out some of the Facebook comments. Jonathan Webb says, apparently the mic in front of me doesn't sound like it's on. Mesa, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, all right, it's on, Jonathan. Hello. Let me reassure you. Um, Matt Cockrell says, keep the fallout love going, guys. Not even a fan, but oh, yeah, 76 is awesome. That's just over my shoulder there. <laughs> And Sean Fullard says the Lion King shouldn't have had any voices. Just go full David Attenborough <laughs> narrating. I'm a, I actually did think about that mid movie. I, I thought this genuinely looks like something out of a David Attenborough film. Mesa is cleaning up that crap. Who put that there? No, we went for a wider shot because we wanted everyone to see what's on the desk, but now you've. Anyway. All that trash is getting seen. <laughs> look at that. Look at that trash. Trash? Tr trash. <laughs> trash. Okay. That is our review of The Lion King. 
if you had to give it a star, I mean, look, I would say you should watch it. Uh, um, I'm not saying it's something that you must go and watch. You're certainly not missing out on anything if you don't. But I had a really good time with it. Yeah, uh, it's not a perfect film by any means, but for what it is, mm. it's not like they could make an original story out mm. of it. So, can you feel yeah. the love tonight happens during the afternoon, and it's just eating me up inside? <laughs> can you uh, do but I did afternoon. go back to the original. It's like still a bit daylight in the mm. original. Yeah, but it starts but it, in daylight. It goes yeah, into it the goes into, into the night. Yeah, because anyway. that's when you're feeling in love. Exactly. What's uh, the rating, guys? Come on. I gave it a full star. So full should star. should watch. Should watch. Uh, yeah, three and a half for me. Three and a half. That's All fair. right. That's fair. Let us know what you think of The Lion King as it comes out. This week, I know plenty of people that I spoke to are super excited to see it. I think Disney's going to make a lot of money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking about movie news, we had so much come out this week, but the biggest headline came from James Bond. Now, I must say, I've never been a huge James Bond fan, but I was quite up and about about this news, and not for all the right reasons. I'm actually kind of upset about the news that we got this week, not because I don't think it can happen. It just frustrates me in the way that it did happen. Mm -hmm. So we got the news that Lashana Lynch, who is an excellent actress, she was most recently in the Captain Marvel Captain film, Marvel, yeah. playing uh, the pilot that uh, Carol Danvers was closest to and can't remember after her memory loss. She is going to be the next 007. That is confirmed. That is announced. It's not going to be Idris Elba, who we all thought it was going yeah, to be. what a shame. Uh, it is going to be a woman for the first time. Uh, she's not playing James Bond, obviously, mm. but she is going to be taking over as 007. Now, it raises a lot of questions. It does, because... She's actually starring alongside Daniel Craig in the new film that's coming out next year. Yeah. Uh, Which I didn't realise until you said earlier today. So, I mean, Fish is our movie expert. Are we going to see, like, a handing over of the baton? Yeah, that's expecting? what it sounds like. It, it, from what I've been reading, it sounds like James Bond is going to retire mm. and this woman is going to take over the 007 agent number mm. so she's not James Bond she's not Jane Bond she's just 007 I wonder how they're going to retire in I actually look this is what I wanted to, to ask about because the reason why I'm frustrated is because there are so many like I, I don't believe you can change gender doesn't matter when it comes to a character you can introduce any character to us whether it be female or male and we can fall in love with that character if it's well thought out mm -hmm. but once we have fallen in love with a character it makes no sense to change it. Lara Croft could be Liam Croft, but why would you? Well, we, nobody, it doesn't make any we sense. Don't no, see that. no one like, wants that. I mean, you could recast the Harry Potter film and make it all different. We can have a Harriet and a, a Ronnie yeah. and a, yeah. a Harry. That's, uh, that's, not, yeah. that's not what the characters are. And, and no. I'm, I'm totally with you on this. And I'm, I'm actually really frustrated as well. I yeah. think this is ridiculous. Um, I'm not against a, a, a female spy movie in the James Bond world no. why can't we have a spin-off and we've like, had so many great mm. female spy movies recently I mean Atomic Blonde was awesome yeah. uh, I mean it's it's not a spy movie but we've seen so many female led action movies yeah. in the last 10 years I mean The Hunger Games was the biggest film that we had and they're new franchises that's what we need I don't see the point behind taking some and don't worry his character is outdated no one is saying that James Bond is the pinnacle of what you should be in 2019 as like a yeah. a badass womanizer but well, again that's his character the thing that's, is that's, that's his character is. and there's been how many movies there's like 25, 25. 30 this will be 20, this will the 25th 25. James Bond movie it's been going that long mm. don't mess with it <laughs> like yeah. I honestly think this will flop I don't think this is going to work this is going to be the, the Ghostbusters reboot all over again I, I liked that movie for what it was. Me too. Um, and that one, you know, they didn't. At least they didn't try to be those the same characters. And that, like, I guess the only gimme I can give this is the fact that she's just taking the code name. Yeah. But it's kind of like, can't she just be 009? Like, can't she just be it's, another one? It, there's no, there's absolutely no need to give her the 007 thing because that is James Bond. Mm. And to take away James Bond. Look, it's it's all coming on the, on top of the Me Too movement mm. and all that sort of stuff, which I'm totally for. Like, there there, there needs to be more female led things, but this character is male. That doesn't mean we get rid of the male characters that we have. Yeah, don't make him such a chauvinistic idiot. Like, which they've gradually gotten better and better. You, if you go back to you know the old Sean Connery, oh, yeah. it's a very very <laughs> different time. Well, we've um, got some varied opinions. Sean Fuller says he's all for it. He thinks it might revitalize a tired series. Is Which it tired though? Skyfall was huge. I gotta say, like, I think <laughs> Skyfall was bigger than Spectre though. I must say, James. Yeah, Spectre sucked though. That was yeah. the last time. <laughs> <laughs> James, can you, you know what is actually I find amazing? Do you remember the outrage 
that there was. A blonde when, bond. Yeah, when there was a, <laughs> a blonde, blonde bond. bond. <laughs> when he walked out of the ocean. Yeah, when he walked out yeah. of the ocean in that initial... Tra- I mean, very sexy scene. We can all agree on that. But <laughs> I still remember the internet outrage back then. It, it was just shows huge. how far we've progressed. Yeah. But yeah. I, I just there's something about this that annoys me because like you, I would have much rather they introduced her as a cool new character in this yeah. one and then gave us a spin-off movie where she can be her own character. Have yeah. her, And she's not going to yeah. be James Bond. Well, that's but the, thing, the fact yeah. that she's got the 007 tag is going to be something that's holding her back almost. I feel exactly the same way. It's why yeah, all the it's... football players that end up at the same team as their dad don't pick their dad's their number. Their dad's number because a... it's a shadow that you're under there. <laughs> yeah, 100% you're there overshadowed. is. You're overshadowed. You want to you know, create your own story. Yeah. You know what the funny thing is? They actually tried to do something uh, similar back with... Um, it was the last Pierce Brosnan one. What was that called? The, um, Die, another Die Another Day. Day. When yeah. Hayley Berry... Yeah. Hayley Berry was in it. And um, they they were hoping to do like spin-off stuff with her. Her name was Jinx in it. Um, and I like, that's the route I think they should have gone. Like e- even if, you know, um, because I, I, what I've read is that James Bond in this new movie will try and seduce this, this, um, this new um, 007 um, and she knocks him back. And that's kind of the big, the big deal. And, and he, um, because and he's then, so because, irresistible. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Well, I can just crying. feel my eyes were like rolling without even me this intending is, on them rolling. I mean. It's just so it's so cringy what they try mm. what, the way it's happening. Yeah. I'm all for like she could just be another agent, and then they tag team. Mm. The next movie is her movie. We have a new James Bond in the background, and then that comes back. The problem is there's too much tag team in Bond anyway. You know what? <laughs> Excuse me. What do, you, what do you mean? <laughs> this is a G-rated show, okay? <laughs> no, Regardless yeah. of the fact that we drink alcohol and we talk about weird things, all right? Look, it's at G-rated. The end of, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't think this is going to be a bad movie. Like, I, I'm sure this this chick is going to be awesome. And, like... The, Great actress. The, really yeah. good. But that, that's my point. Like, especially if they're planning on passing over the baton in this mm. next 25th movie... It doesn't matter how good her run is, if we're using like a relay metaphor. If yeah. they fumble that pass, yeah. no one's going to care about watching the sprint. It doesn't matter. I just think about it because James Bond is such an event movie. Every time mm. a James Bond comes comes out, cinemas pack out, mm. and I like. I just don't know if they will mm. for this because they I'm come for James Bond. I'm not- interested to see what it's called because obviously yeah. the last few have ditched. It, it's never really called Bond, no. but no. anyway. We'll see what comes of it. Let us know what you think. Have we got any more comments there, Jules? Uh, another one from Sean. Yeah. Oh God, Sean is chatty tonight. Anything can be good. Just wait and see what they do with it. Nick Fury, was, Black Nick Fury was an inspired decision, for example. But again, I don't think race really... So no one cares about nobody race. Nobody cared about Nick ha- Fury before the Avengers. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. You know, so as far as I'm aware, I, there's only a Black Nick Fury. Yeah, I didn't yeah, even yeah. know there was a white Nick Fury yeah. before this. You're blowing my mind, Sean. All right. Uh, <laughs> like it would be, it would be different if it was coming from, uh, you know, if 007 was a comic book and they brought it in and it was like a woman. Like it, it still would be kind of up in the air and controversial. But like we're not. There's not 25 movies of attachment to this character. Yeah. Um, and look again, Sean. I'm not saying that this is going to be a bad thing. I just think it didn't need to be done this way. I and it's not. And it's not like it's a reboot either. She's a she's a character carrying yeah. on from a film. Yeah. Anyway, I would have almost rather she had been like his daughter. She was a bond, yeah, at a least different have a bond. bond. Yeah. yeah, a bond yeah. with bond. Anyway. bond you know, blood. like Mr. She's, bond. It would have been great if she ended up being like the illegitimate t- child from something like an Octopussy or even further. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, this comes back to haunt yes. Daniel Craig, and he's like, "It wasn't even me. He's like, but oh. I'm Bond." Yeah. <laughs> I somehow remember that. <laughs> look, let's move on from the yeah, James yeah. Bond bashing because uh, uh, look, it's fine. It's probably going to be great. We will probably enjoy the movie when it comes out. I just hope that we like it for the right reasons and it doesn't get canned for the wrong reasons. People have paid millions of dollars to work this stuff out, so let's let's just let them do it. That's true. (laughs) Anyway, let's talk about more positive news. Uh, We're all big fans of uh, Thor. Ragnarok. Only the third Ragnarok. one. Only the Ragnarok. third one. No, the first Ragnarok. two can be, you know, shoved out Especially the, the window. Especially Dark World. Yeah, really bad. Anyway, the director behind Thor Ragnarok, Taika Waititi, who is just inspired, who breathes a whole new life, not into just that franchise, but his character. Like, Thor is a completely different character than what yeah. he was in the first two. Yeah. Has been confirmed to come back for Thor 4. So good. Fantastic. Which, Huge news. There are two elements to this news. One, that he is returning. And two, that there's actually going to be a Thor 4. Oh, yeah. Didn't see it yeah. coming, to be honest. Uh, I saw a Guardians of the Galaxy featuring mm. 
Chris Hemsworth. I actually thought it was going to be like an Asgardians of the Galaxy, mm. which is exact. There is a comic that is called just that. Mm. It could be like this is probably just a working title. I'm, a, I'm assuming. I'm sh- Thor sure Thor. it's not going like, to come out gonna, as Thor Four. There's no, going to be right. like something on it, so it could be Thor. You know. And, and fun fact: Asgardians. this is the first MCU film to get four films. A fourth one, yeah. He's beaten out Captain America. He's beaten out Iron Man. Like, Thor of all Thor. people like you wouldn't have seen that from Thor 1 no, especially, <laughs> especially after no, Dark World no yeah. exactly but anyway um, that's coming we don't know I mean we were expecting a lot more news from Marvel once Spider-Man came out yeah, because they said much. they were going to reveal what Phase 4 was going to be but I feel like we're just getting drip fed information which is fine but it would be great to get one of those graphics that they put up way back when where you just, just get the timeline yeah and you're like, yeah yeah I'm sorted I know what I'm watching until 2024 do we have a date for the next Marvel movie? I think no, Black we Widow don't know is, what um, the movie yeah, is. next year, isn't the it? The rumour is that it's Black Widow next year. In fact, I think it's it's confirmed that it's Black Widow, but we don't have an exact date. I don't think it's actually been said mm. that it's coming out next year. Yeah, they're being very cryptic. I, th- I like it. I like it because it's been so mm. set in stone for mm. so long. We we're always like, oh, we're getting to an Infinity War and then, and then we'll go from there. But we're past that now and here we are. Like, yeah, the Spider-Man was a great um, sort of wrap-up mm. for that phase. But, um, Phenomenal film, by the way. We haven't actually spoken about yeah, it on this podcast, but it is genuinely fantastic. Really good. I know Mesa doesn't care, it's but going to be my favorite year. No Marvel films. Oh, all right. He just <laughs> said it's going to be his favorite year because there's no Marvel films coming out next year. But he's wrong because Black Widow is coming out. Oh, yeah, uh, you can't escape it. Last yeah, little bit of movie news. Movie I'll let you take this one, Fish. Fish, because you're a huge fan of A Quiet Place. It yes. Turns out we're getting a sequel. Yes, there is A Quiet Place too, and um, James John Krasinski, who was Jim in The Office. Uh, direct wrote and directed the original, starred in it as well. Um, he will be coming back in the director's chair again, which is huge Insane. because not unlike Jordan Peele, um, it seems that comedians are really good at horror. <laughs> I didn't actually realize he directed the first. Yeah, yeah, um, it was his baby. Place. Like he, I think there was, I think he had a concept, but he wrote it from the ground up. Um, and his wife is Emily Blunt, who starred in it as well. Are they married? Yeah, man. He's oh my god. Well done. John well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but right? um, he was going to have her star in it, and then she was like, "Well, you need to direct this because nobody else will be able to do this like you did." It's, it's quite an inspiring story, actually. And now, yeah, Such we're a going great back movie. for a, a second one. One of the best horror movies in the last five years, easily. Easily. And it's uh, it's. It's truly terrifying. There it's also everything scenes. that Bird Box should have been. That's yeah. the thing. People from Bird Box, Bird Box and but this didn't really this get a big reception. It, yeah, did no, it? it's I thought it's Bird Box came out after this. It did. It did. Yeah. I'm saying Bird Box ripped this off. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> yeah, if yeah. any, that like they didn't, but it feels like it after. I, I remember seeing the Bird Box trailer and being like, "Ah, oh, that's quite place." Um, it's a great thing where you, the, there's monsters out in the world and you can't make any noise. That's the whole thing. Is mm. it's so everything's silent, and everything's so intense mm. because of this one little setup that they have in this movie. So the second movie is is not particularly a continuation on of these characters fully. It's just set in the quiet place world with the same actress. Well, I'm sh- uh, I know Emily Blunt's coming back in. I don't know in what regard. Like, oh, okay, she may not be the, the, the lead. Or, I'm, I'm, I, there's I no hope there's details. a bit of a time jump because yeah. I just really liked the way that it ended. Like, we didn't need, uh, no spoilers, but we didn't need to see any more. It was just mm. great the way that that film it wrapped did. up. It yeah. left you with a really uh, inspiring feeling, I would say. Yeah, inspiring. exactly. And the, the thing I read, uh, that Krasinski... Were, uh, hopeful. Hopeful, yeah, definitely. And, and needed, sure. needed an underwear change. <laughs> <laughs> Krasinski has said that, you know, there's, like, that was one set, the one family in this world that is ravaged by these monsters, you know what I'm saying? So it, it'd be cool to see what's happening with the rest of the world. I think that's mm. where it's going to go. But, yeah, it'd be cool to see. Um, and it comes out very soon. Yeah, March next year. March next year. Which is, that's insane. I find yeah. it crazy that we just found out that this sequel's coming and it's going to be released in uh, T-minus seven months, eight months. Yeah, well, they, they probably already shot it. To now, um, while you're here, Dave, we've got a couple of great movie trailers during the week. Oh, you're a bit yes. excited about this. Oh, man. Okay, so I am a <laughs> massive Rob Zombie fan. Like, Rob Zombie is my jam. <laughs> and I love his music. I love his movies. I think we've his, been listening uh, to Rob Zombie in the car before. Yes, we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in my car, it's probably on at some point. It's in, on every one of my playlists. Um, I want to be this guy because he's living the he's living the dream. He's a rock star, and he makes awesome horror movies, and he makes them the way he wants to make them, which is why I really dig it. Uh, he did a, a really good Halloween um, reboot mm-hmm. 
um, a couple of years ago, which is probably one of the best horror reboots I've ever seen. But my favorite Rob Zombie movie is the sequel to his debut movie, House of a Thousand Corpses. It's called The Devil's Rejects. It's a fantastic film, and it's finally getting a third chapter called Three from Hell. The characters all seemingly died at the end of the, the last movie, but we're going to see how this um, un unleashes here. But so, it looks incredibly intense. I was going to ask, what do you think of the trailer? Because it, it almost looks like it's got a, an 80s or 90s vibe to he's, it. He's very um, obsessed with 70s cinema. So a lot of his stuff has a 70s vibe about it. Like yeah. It looks like it's been shot on film that was buried in the desert for like 30 mm. years. <laughs> and then they awesome. brought it back out. It's just this grainy, dirty... And that's pretty much what Rob Zombie's all about. His, his stuff's all really handheld. It's, it's just dirty. It's just dirt. And I love it. Do we know when it's coming out? Um, so it's coming out in September. I think it will only get a, a fairly limited cinema, cinema release. But like most of his movies, they tend to get more of a cult following mm. once they hit um, you know, VOD and stuff like that. Um, but VOD. wherever it is, video on demand. Oh, yeah. no, good to know. <laughs> you can't say DVD <laughs> anymore, man. What is Nobody that acronym? That. VOD. <laughs> um, so I need to find out where they're going to screen this, and I need to go see it. Is what's happening? In September. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll you'll give us a full review oh, when it comes yes, out. Oh, yes, I will. And uh, Julian, one more for the Kingsman. Well, see, I haven't even seen the other films. Okay, well, Fish, The Kingsman. The Kingsman. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen them? No. This is, oh, this is, a, this is a prequel so It is a big Kingsman. deal. So, yeah, there's a, so there's two Kingsman movies, right? <laughs> so the, the other one was... Colin Firth started, and they were great. And this is King's Man. This is Man. Dark King's Man. So the Kingsman is like this... Uh, it's kind of like a James Bond-esque mm. um, super spy society that all work out of a, a, a suit shop. Um, and this is kind of the prequel to it all, setting up how the Kingsman um, legacy starts, I guess. I don't know. I, was, I wasn't I was a huge fan of the other ones. Um, they're fun action films, um, but they're very British, and that didn't work as much for me as it seemed to for everyone else in the world. Um, what a racist you are. Yeah. What do you have against the Brits. our well, colonisers? Right? <laughs> <laughs> how dare you speak ill of but, the Queen? <laughs> so how many films will this be now? Is this three uh, this already? Is the third one. This is the I'm third. so confused. Why do they just put a number on the end of it? What yeah. is The King's Man? I'm not going to be able to connect that. Well, if you, if you watch the other ones, you would know, yeah. <laughs> it also annoys me because that film will technically be, if I had to, I catalogue all my DVDs alphabetically because... Mm have some weird obsession no you gotta do it man you can't and you can't that would actually come before the sequel yeah oh, see I have, a, I have a I so have a going back to the Rob Zombie movies they all have different names but I have them in, in the yeah, I've got to put them in the thing so it starts at a house of thousands uh, alright yeah, just a reminder like <laughs> we're moving on just a reminder we've got a few things to give away yes The Lion King is out today in cinemas and we've we've been given um, a prize pack that's not, Dumbo, not Dumbo. <laughs> not we've Dumbo. got uh, this uh, Lion King notebook which has a cute little Simba on the front. We've got this drink bottle here, which looks pretty good, and if no one claims it, I'm having it. And a coffee cup, because it's 2019, cup. and we're environmentally friendly. And yes, I feel like, I mean, the, the only rule for winning this at the end of the episode was to literally make as much noise as possible. I'm not and seeing I think any noise I finally made. worked out why Sean Fullard is commenting as much as he actually is. <laughs> oh, and of course we've got uh, an awesome Lion King backpack um, as well. So there's All part of the prize pack. You, you want to win? Tag some friends, share the podcast. We'd really appreciate your support. While we're here, we've got a couple more comments. Adam Pever says, We didn't see a white Nick Fury in the 200 films prior, though. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> uh, Tegan Rampler, Daniel Craig is the best, but excited for a female. Good to get some positive. Uh, uh, I don't know what Gladiator Hulk means. Did we. Gladiator Hulk, he's in Ragnarok. Oh, oh of course. Oh. God, my God, my oh, short term memory is <laughs> that bad. Uh, Rebecca Jade is very keen for a next, uh, the next. Thor movie Adam Pether loves Rob Zombie I reckon it might be very close between Adam Pether and Sean Fullard as to who wants this Lion King giveaway more <laughs> oh no Rebecca Jade's up for it uh, and what's the matter kid you don't like clowns oh my god she's, oh, that's a Rob Zombie thing she's coming in strong uh, and she's very keen for the coffee cup uh, <laughs> I've almost lost where we are in this show <laughs> we've just been so focused no, no, here, on coffee we're going to talk about some games coffee cup too. oh games Okay. Let's talk about Finally. some games. There's been a lot of movies. What are we talking about games? Well, here, look, boys? so frustratingly, because I am the Nintendo nerd on this podcast, uh, I love any Nintendo related <laughs> news. Meso's nodding wildly. It's so frustrating wildly. that he likes Nintendo so much. That's... And no joke, within an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes of us. I remember getting home from the podcast last week and just going, oh my God. Nintendo announced <laughs> this. 
It's a brand new console. <laughs> and like, and we missed telling you guys, but um, if you did go on our website, I quickly smashed out a little thing for you to read. Yeah, clearly they are not very considerate of our release schedule. <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> Which I don't understand why. I know they're in Japan. They get the show. Nintendo We're global. Nintendo don't care. We are they, a global show. They absolutely don't. <laughs> but this... This is the Nintendo Switch Lite. It is a smaller version of the Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. It's got a smaller screen as a result. The Joy-Cons do not detach, so it's just one solid system, almost very similar to the old school PlayStation Vita. And it comes in three colours. We've got this banana yellow, a grey, and a the colour that is going to be stuffed on shelves because nobody wants it, that turquoise. Hey, I would have gone the turquoise. You would have gone the turquoise? Yeah. <laughs> of course Are you kidding me? All these colours suck. <laughs> I, must, I could not have been more disappointed by the colour waves. Yeah. And I know we don't have it in the video there. The coolest looking one is the Pokemon Special Edition one See, that they're going to cool. bring out. It's yeah. light grey. It's got pink on one side, blue on the other side. It actually yeah. looks really, really nice. i got to say, Stop though, shaking your head over there. I'm, so, I'm sick of your negativity, Meso. <laughs> hey, it's, it's definitely not something I'm going to think about. <laughs> I, I can imagine a lot of kids are going to be disappointed at Christmas when their parents accidentally buy them the wrong Switch. Because the price point's not very different, I'll tell you that. So what what are what's a normal switch going for these days? Because I'm I mean Amazon Prime you could get them for what three forty nine or something. I'm flabbergasted at how expensive this is. You could Mind get you, one that's, in, that's the, the in this latest Prime. sale for the same price almost that you'd pay for the retail of this new switch. Three hundred and twenty nine. The Amazon the Amazon Prime sale has the switch now, the current one for three hundred and fifty dollars, but mm. it is four hundred and thirty dollars typically RRP. Mm. The new one was supposed to be 200 USD, but mm. for some reason we're paying an extra $150 on top of that because our conversion rate sucks here in Australia. So, so it's, it's $330 basically retail. Is it three thirty? Yeah, it's for, it's for the new one. For the new yeah, one. For this yeah. new one, yeah. spend the extra 50 bucks, yeah. get the get That's the better one. I'm not one. Doing, this one d it doesn't connect to your TV. The Joy Cons, they don't. Yeah, they, they don't, don't disconnect. Good. So if you wanted to play something like I know. We wouldn't, but if you just dance is very popular. Mm. Other games with motion controls, you'd need to buy a whole new set of controllers to do that. And the Joy-Con no, are expensive. It just wouldn't be the same if you couldn't shake your hat away. Or no, <laughs> exactly. So look, it, uh, I personally wouldn't buy it. I can see it being a big hit for kids. It has a place, and I think it's for kids yeah. because it, it's, I'm sure it's indestructible too. Really so young. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. The, it is. The, the the tagline is that it's made for handheld gaming. Yes. Mm. Um, so the battery so meant to last. Switch. Well, the switch is pretty big. Like the switch is big. Like in in terms of normal. Like well, you know, I went go. from the Vita. I brought it to with, the... with us today just so we could have a look at. You know, it's, it's alright. Like so it's great. I like. I love the big but screen. But like, like in terms for a kid, like it's quite heavy. Well, and... that's very apt that you removed that one Joy-Con because apparently that is the size roughly of oh, the Switch Lite, just about that big. So it's, oh, okay. it's so considerably it's shorter. Usually um, sure. No, not not that much of a difference. But yeah. once you sort of take that away from the screen, because that's the thing that really suffers. Yeah. They can't make the buttons all that smarter, yeah. smaller. Uh, I think we're, it's going to be quite noticeable. I'm, I just think it's it needs to be a lot cheaper. Mm. It needs to be much much cheaper than three hundred and twenty nine dollars. I agree, yeah. especially when you're taking away the TV functionality. That's, like yeah, that's, that's huge. Ninety nine yeah. percent of the Switch's appeal yeah. right there. I mean, the, the argument is these kids don't all have TVs in their bedrooms to you know connect mm. to. But I think the but thing again, is like, like what if you just had bucks. one Switch and you and your mates just wanted to play a quick game or something? They would have to have another Switch, mm. or you'd have to buy extra Joy Cons. Well, like this is the equivalent of having a DS, right? Like every kid had a DS. It's like someone's got a day. DS and just snapped it in half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, one. yeah. <laughs> but like, and that's fine. Like there is a t there is a time and place for that stuff, but it's too expensive. <laughs> like if you're not if you're taking away all the good stuff that the Switch comes with, you mm. need to knock that price. Yeah, well I down. think the only reason they get away with the price point is because of the functionality. Mm. And they have stripped all the functionality out of the Switch Lite. Mm. So again, it's not something that I would buy. It's not something I would recommend even if you can get uh, if you can afford to buy the the more expensive yeah. one. Just because yeah. it is so much better to be able to plug it into your TV. I play my Switch ninety percent of the time on the TV. I, I rarely play it handheld unless I'm actually going somewhere and yeah. I know I'm actually going to have time. Yeah, and I do like that that plug and play. Get mm. out and um, on the train, I can play as well. Like I can continue the game, but. Um, the thing I love is when I'm playing handheld and I'm like, oh, battery's getting a bit low. Just Boom. stick it on the TV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not that I do that too much, I'm going to say. <laughs> but, you know, I would use it more if I... When <laughs> when is the light coming out? Uh, September. 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 Yeah, so three hundred and twenty nine dollars. Okay. And ninety five cents. And ninety. Don't forget the ninety five cents. Very good. It all counts. Uh, one game that will not cost you three hundred and twenty nine dollars to get into, if assuming you already own a mobile phone, uh, that's not more. a Nokia thirty three ten, is Minecraft <laughs> Earth. 
Uh, we <laughs> highlighted this when it came out, or when the trailer dropped a while mm. ago. We finally have some beta footage of what Minecraft Earth is. And Jules, I mean, you might be the best one to explain it to us. It's sort of a merger between Minecraft yeah. and Pokemon Go. Well, I better give credit to IGN for posting this 17 minutes of beta gameplay. Mm -hmm. So in Seattle and London at the moment, you can download and test this beta for the new Minecraft Earth game. It's essentially Pokemon Go with more AR involvement and, well, you, as you, you would expect, building. You're essentially building a world with other people and seeing that world yeah. through your so, phone. Someone could build an object, probably a phallic-shaped object. <laughs> many phallic <-shaped>. just <laughs> Many. <laughs> and you're just going to be able to see other people's creations throughout the world. Um, and you obviously still have to dig through things and find items to mm. build these other things with. So. so instead of seeing it in a virtual world, locked to your computer screen, you could potentially be just sitting there going through the train to North Melbourne Station and you go, oh my god, what's somebody created over there? <laughs> it's going to be super obnoxious, just like it yeah, was every time when you saw people walking around with their phones playing Pokemon Go. But the difference with this one is people are going to be looking around like this, right? Yeah. I, like, it's a pretty cool idea. I'm, I'm not a Minecraft fan, so it's not really for me, but I, I feel if you... Well, even if you're not, like it'll be cool to just see what's around and stuff, mm. but the worry that I have is if everyone can just put stuff everywhere... It's just not going to be like this nice little bird jumping around in a in a in a <laughs> in a pond here. It's just going to be a mess of blocks and, like you said before, phallic objects. Oh, I, I think there's going to be more zones where you you'll be able to place your items. Oh, in your, okay. Your builds in. Yeah, it won't, there has it to won't be just some, be like some you know put it something in the be backyard. Some order to this craziness. I think you, the concept is you can build wherever you want in your house. You can build your design, but then you can only place it in certain. Like no, I don't like that around the world. That that limits it so much. I actually think it would have been so, so cool, and that's what I envisioned. That you would almost see bits of somebody's design, something coming off a certain mm. building in the city or otherwise. I know it must be super hard to do. Uh, yeah, I don't think the technology is there for it. Well, look. To be honest, I was just about to comment on the tech. This to me is a really disappointing end product for what they showed off with well, it's Minecraft. Not an end, end product. No, no, no. I know it's a beta, but do you remember years ago when Microsoft had that? glass it was like a oh, what happened with that it was oh, a, a yeah. set of glasses glass. which you would be able to see augmented reality on and they did this awesome stage presentation where they were building a minecraft world on a table mm. yeah. and you could just walk around it see things yeah, interact with it it was amazing that never came to fruition no. and it almost feels like this is what it's resulted in well maybe this is a stepping stone towards something like mm. that eventually yeah, this is still in beta and we can't even play it anyway because no. we're not in Seattle or London. <laughs> so when it comes so to Australia... There's we'll a nice big tease for y'all. Let us know what you think. <laughs> I mean, would, is this something that you would play? I presume it would be free to play with a few different ways to speed oh, yeah. up you your experience. You can buy your dirt. Yes. So buy, buy your materials. That virtual you dirt. Look forward to that. Um, and that will come out sometime <laughs> in the future. We actually don't know. They haven't re released uh, a proper launch date for it just yet. <laughs> uh, we're getting a few comments. Adam says he can't wait, can't wait to catch a block of dirt. And Rebecca says she's going to build another block of dirt on that block of dirt. Mm -hmm. And Matt says, I'm going to do something threatening as well. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't read that in the joking voice that I should have. <laughs> I'm going to do some threatening. I ruined your punchline. I'm so, so sorry, Matt. Um, in terms of assaulting other people, I didn't assault Matt, but I definitely ruined his joke. Uh, Call <laughs> of Duty has announced a, a new gunfight mode. Sounds pretty cool, actually. It actually sounds great. Like, I'm not the biggest Call of Duty fan. I haven't played one for, for years. I think the last one I played was Black Ops 2. Ooh. Which is a long time ago. Three. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. Which is a long, long time ago. But new modes like this could potentially get me back in because this is the stuff that I really like to see. Um, it is basically Call of Duty 2 on 2 and you all have the same loadout. Did we end up with the trailer for it, Mesa? I didn't get it in time. We forgot to put it in in time, so we can't show you. Um, but instead of jumping in, worrying about your loadouts and all that, and worrying about whether or not somebody else is going to have a more powerful gun than you or better perks if they get a kill streak, mm. you all go in with the same stuff. It's really quick. I think they said 40 second rounds, which is crazy. Um, oh, last wow, man standing. Kind of cool, actually. Yeah. I love a quick game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, sometimes I don't have time to put in like half an hour for a match. Mm. I mean, how long does an average match go for on Call of Duty? Oh, it's more than... Yeah, it's, it's quite a while. Oh, yeah, but then you've got your Battle Royale stuff, which can go for, what, yeah, half an hour? Yeah, yeah, there's nothing yeah. more frustrating so, than getting to the final 10 in Fortnite, only by hiding in a house. I've yeah. never gotten there any <laughs> other way. I've I never play. legitimately killed someone to get to the top 10. <laughs> but uh, you never legitimately killed someone? Mate, you won an entire game without yeah. touching You're anyone. You're the champion. I did, my first game. Anyway, you can't do that in this, lo in this new uh, game mode for Call of Duty because... 
Uh, the way it works is very, very different. If you camp, uh, you need to be close to the centre of a map because if there are two people alive on both teams at the end of it, then uh, you need to get to a flag in the centre of the map and defend it for three seconds. It's going to be really fast-paced. You get a point if you win each round and you need to win, I think, six points, I think it was. So I like what we're seeing out of them. Um, it's very much Destiny Trials. Very Mate, much so Destiny says, Trials. I don't know what that is. It's a, it's a game mode in Destiny. We don't have video of that either, so we're really <laughs> struggling to show but and tell. From what I understand, <laughs> you, you get loaded with, you can all get loaded with like, you know, I don't know, AK-47s, and or you all get loaded with pistols. It, it reminds me of the old, um, speaking of 007, the old Goldeneye game, mm -hmm. where you could all just only have the golden gun. <laughs> you could only have rocket launchers and just anarchy pursuits. So, That's great, the great equaliser. Yeah, I think it's cool. Like, In an era of pay to win, it's very refreshing. Yeah, or, or pay to win, or those kids who have all the time in the world to, to maximise their loadout, so when you go and you've got a pea shooter against a bazooka. <laughs> So, I'm looking... That's cool. I'd play that. Mm. When does Call of Duty come out, Mason? November? October? Something like that. It's always October. Something like that. Uh, <laughs> one final video that we wanted to leave you with before we discuss what games we were playing no, I'm this already week. getting anxiety thinking about this video. Yeah. Uh, I love Super Mario Maker 2. I've been playing it. I've finished the campaign. I'm starting to make my own levels. I haven't even completed one yet. But this one, 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 but with a twist, is a riff on the classic Mario level. Probably the most famous level in video games, to be honest. And... Whoever this sadist is that has made it, <laughs> yeah. yes, look at it. Whoa! It is. This is the first what? level of Mario in Super Mario. Like this is you know one one, but they've made a twist on it. Oh, <laughs> YT Sunnies. Oh, whoever's doing this is YT it. Sunnies on YouTube created this. I must say, I d this is not his first playthrough. Look, you had to bounce <laughs> around. No, I'm just going to gonna say the first go. I'm almost certain that there's a computer playing this. This is like a, a bosh. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a freak. <laughs> if you Far out. It's just great viewing. I know we, it only goes for about a minute, but oh. it's insane. And it yeah, goes to show thing. the creativity <laughs> that people have. Get to that flag, boy. You can do it. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, and oh, and, and he only the, gets 100, the flag too. 100 points. Killed it. It's quite incredible. and But that is just a small example of the creativity on display. That's the one that caught our eye this week. I'm desperate to play some of your levels. In fact, if anyone is playing Super Mario Maker 2 right now and would like us to showcase their episode or their level on the show, next episode is what I meant to say, why don't you leave the little code in our comments on our Facebook video and we would absolutely love to do that. Um, I need to play... Or I need to make a few myself because it's such a it is a long process. Like I think it, that's all I'd do. I'd, I probably wouldn't be playing many levels as much as building them. No, they're good, they're good fun to play. There are some automated levels on there where all you need to do is literally take one step. Sometimes you don't even need to take a step, and it'll just push you through this unbelievable maze mm. until you get to the goal. And it's just mm. great to sit back and watch. They're mm. they're really really smart, really ingenious. And we spoke about the ones that the guy from who made Celeste did a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I played I those this week. Well, so, much, so much. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really, really awesome. worth it. Um, yeah, what a great game. Of course, we talk about tech on this podcast too, and we've sort of ignored it this week. So we've shoehorned in a little bit of news right at the end, yeah. <laughs> and it comes courtesy of our friend uh, Elon Musk, of course, the head of Tesla. Our friend. <laughs> Good friend of ours. So he's just in the other room over there, but he's yeah, busy. Look, so. we, we yep. only contact him when we need him. Like, um, <laughs> it's that sort of relationship. But he came out this week. Uh, we know that he's got a sort of side project, a startup called Neuralink. How many Neuralink. side projects does he have? Uh, look, this guy's unbelievable. Like, he's got this boring project that he digs tunnels under LA. He builds flamethrowers. And Neuralinks. Neuralinks. So basically what it is, it's a computer chip that you will plug into your brain... And it has thousands of electronic connectors, which basically it's it's a human interface with a computer. Uh, this has been coming for a while. They already use some pretty uh, what's the word? I'm clunky versions of this to give people who have limited movement in their body some form of control over an arm to say pick up a cup or otherwise. Although that technology is really really still in the early stages of development. This, and I know it only looks like a chip, but because it's all about this big, we don't actually see it doing anything, but it just looks awesome. So let us know what you think. Would you put a computer chip in your brain? I don't know. Well, Musk has supposedly put one in a monkey, and a monkey can do it, control things with his mind. The reason why this is news is that he has said they're going to start human trials in 2020, mm. which is next year. Mm. Now, I don't know if you would let Elon Musk crack open your 
skull. Dave. That wouldn't be a trial. <laughs> oh. But honestly, I feel like this is where game consoles are going to go eventually. Mm. We're going to be playing games like this. Um, it's a scary thought. So. I, I would rather, and I know it's fine to control things with your brain. It would be awesome to basically be Eleven from Stranger Things. Totally. But... I'd rather video games were the physical aspect. You know when we got that great shot of the treadmill which goes in 360 degrees yeah. and you can run? Yeah, that, that, yeah. It's just not Ready feasible. Ready player one yeah. style. Have you guys seen that Black Mirror episode where they plug into the fighting game? I haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen it? Anyway, there's a Black Mirror episode where these two best friends join a fighting game, physical fighting game. I don't and they spoil like it. connect into it and are actually in the game fighting. Yeah, they are like, in the yeah. game and they are in that world. Just watch it. Yeah, deep dive. It's going to be a thing at some point. This is the start. All right, this is the start. Let (laughs) us know. Would you? I mean, has anyone commented? Do we know what people want? Do we know what people want? What? This is a wee bit terrifying. That's a good comment. It is terrifying, Rebecca. I'm very, very scared. Elon should put one in his own brain. Elon should. What about those people that have like um, tap and go in their wrists and stuff? How many people done that? He could be Uh, like Magneto. Like like implants. I've seen people that like have an implant to swipe into their building and stuff. Mm. You're kidding me. What if they move house? (laughs) <laughs> Reprogram the, the chip. I guess so. <laughs> you oh, always have go. to have that You'll probably take it out somehow. <laughs> it hurt. <laughs> Look, while we tally up the votes and try to work out who has made the most noise on the show this week online... There's, one, hey, there's still time. Make more noise. There's still time. Make more noise. No one is... Oh, no, we've had five shares. So We some, might have to go through it and then uh, announce in the comments after the show. All right. But no, I want to, I want to announce it on we the want show. To do it. Oh, I want to do it on the show. Do it. Let me get my head down. <laughs> All right, you start doing that. I'll ask Fish. Fish, have you... Who wants to win these prizes? Tell me now. <laughs> Just comment. Just say, yeah, I really need to win this right now. Like, uh, I need it. If and you and give, tag your mom and your dad. And If you can give us a reason why or just tell us what you're going to write down first in this Lion King notebook, <laughs> that might be the thing that gets you over the line. <laughs> oh my god it's, it's so heavy <laughs> it's wrapped in plastic so you know it's fresh uh, <laughs> if you'd like Jules can sign it for you as well um, I'm sorry I won't do that to you don't worry <laughs> <laughs> um, alright Fish what are you watching what do you play this week oh man I have been going hard on the Castlevania collection mm. on Switch man I am obsessed with those games I used to play the first one a lot um, probably like 10 years ago and I could never get past like the fourth level mm-hmm. <laughs> but luckily in this in this collection you can do save states so I've been playing it very much in the way that I would play Celeste um, yes. which in that game you know you would die and you basically just start at the, the start of the screen again so I, I save it when I get to a new screen and then I try to do that and move on to the next level uh, to the next screen and then save it there and god damn is that game brutal even when you play it that way to beat the final boss in the first one took me hours mm. I, was, I was playing it's, it's a perfect like plane game I was playing it on a plane on the way home the other day but yeah they're, they're brutal I don't know have you ever played much of yeah, them? yeah I've, like, I've never finished the first one yeah and I've never finished the second one I said to you I, I'd beaten Super Castlevania the oh, one the, on the yeah, SNES the fourth one yeah yeah but uh, I've never actually played the original yeah. two so I'm well, the very the second one's even like it's not hard but it's cryptic as hell like to figure out where to go and how to do things is Obviously, outrageous you actually told me this earlier in the week what did yeah. you have to do so there's one bit where like you're walking around it's kind of more of an RPG mm. old, um, the, the second one and there's a bit where you, I just couldn't figure out where to go and apparently you have to go up to a, a wall like it just looks like any wall in the game and you have to select a red crystal in your inventory and kneel for like five or six seconds and then a tornado comes and picks you up and takes you to the next mansion where you, you get expect? the next piece of uh, How did you not break that out? I don't understand. Buddy. And I was like, whoever finished this game without a walkthrough, I want to shake that man's hand because that is impressive. That's outrageous. I used to hate that. I, I felt like in those old games... They just made it difficult for the sake of being yeah. difficult. Yeah, it wasn't fun. And you couldn't actually yeah. win unless, or you couldn't complete the game unless you'd bought the latest gaming magazine, yeah, which had Nintendo the Power. <laughs> yeah, which had the hint in it. It's yeah. so frustrating. And it's yeah, it's a bit ridiculous. But like the game itself is fun, and this the, the limited story behind it is great. And I had a good time playing it. But I, it it does get frustrating as a game when you have to turn to a walkthrough, and then it's something like that. Yeah, it's like what. Yeah, I was never I, gonna do I that. I had no chance. It's the same as look, frustratingly in the original Legend of Zelda when it's yeah just yep. burning a tree. Yeah, 
Why would Why you would burn, you ever burn a that tree? specific yeah, that tree one, yeah, on that specific? Yeah. So many yeah. trees on that. No. Anyway, anyway, it's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. Excellent old series. I wish mm. that uh, it was more popular these days. But I do love the fact that we've got the Netflix show. Simon Belmont and Richter were added to Smash Brothers. They're, they're sort yeah. of making a quasi comeback in terms of the yeah. pop culture aspect. But I feel like there's got to be a game on the on the horizon um, because there was two games on the PS3 mm. that were quite good. Um, and it's just got such a good lore behind it all. Yeah. And I, I think they might be kicking something off with this animation. Given, given the creator went and did his own thing with Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night, because Konami was basically not letting him make a new oh, Castlevania, I, I don't know if it's coming. Yeah, okay. That only came out a couple of weeks ago. It runs like absolute trash on the Switch, so don't buy it. Oh, unless okay. I was uh, about to be like, oh. get it on the PlayStation or the Xbox. Okay. And uh, just really quickly, before we announce our winner of today's contest, uh, I have been playing still a lot of Super Mario Maker 2, sort of allude, alluded to it earlier. I've also uh, been getting through the fourth year of Lego Harry Potter because that's <laughs> very important in my life at the moment. It's the, it. it's the one the game fiance my fiancé has ever asked me to play. Like, ever. Run with of, it. <laughs> of everything, she is keen to play that. What year are you up to? Four. We just defeated the dragon. Spoilers. Oh, the Triwizard Tournament would be awesome. Yeah, that would Look, be Look, it is fun, but it's, you know... It's oh, a, what are you what are you it's saying? A basic game. Is it a kids game? Is it's that absolutely not a game. <laughs> I mean it is a kids game. But anyway, <laughs> Lego games are fun. Now we've had a whole heap of comments all, right. <laughs> all these people making it. Oh my god, it's hold right. on a second. I've can worked we, it out. I've can worked I, can it I just out. read through some of these? Because I don't think I've ever seen people so keen to win some Lion <laughs> King paraphernalia. I'm scrolling. I'm having to continue scrolling. So we got a me, Richard Harrison has just gone in complete caps lock noise, which is excellent. I love that. <laughs> Uh, Devin made Lomas needs the Lion King notebook. Uh, Jade O'Shea Dumbo for the win. I need a sixth. I need a sixth keep cup in my life. I mean, fair enough. You care a lot about the environment. Um, I have no keep cups. I'm writing the lyrics to Circle of Life. Hey, Richard, <laughs> liked that. I did ask you to write what you would put in the uh, the diary first. The Swahili ones too. Jeez, alright, he's going next level. I actually watched The Lion King, the original, to prepare for this week's show. Oh, and um, the movie last night, and I had subtitles on because often I just chuck them on because yeah. for some reason I like to read while I'm watching my yeah. TV. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, when it got to the Circle of Life at the beginning of it, you know how we all just sort of make up the words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I finally was looking at it and I was like, "That looks nothing. That's not what I was I'm saying. not recognizing anything <laughs> here at all. This is made up." <laughs> Anyway, Priscilla's just commented and said it was an epic battle against the dragon. It's not a kid's game. Yeah. Uh, She's uh, trying to defend it. Um, uh, Mesa's commenting over there by himself <laughs> <laughs> with the must play account. Mesa, Mesa, Give Mesa. it to Mesa. <laughs> I don't have <laughs> Richard Harrison again. I'm basically a superhero. All right, just quickly, I've been playing the Stranger Things 3 game this week on my Nintendo Switch. Um, and I'm going to review it for next week. I know it's been out for about two weeks now, um, but I don't want to give my full review this week because a few people are still watching the series mm. and this game is spoiler central. Mm. Oh, it's it's know. like an extended <laughs> Stranger Things 3 So it is based game. around... It's, it, it, it is, is the Stranger exact Things same thing 3. as the show, but okay. there's extra dialogue. Oh, that's cool. Extra so you missions. play through the season? Yeah, you, you go through and... and um, you can do multiple quests at the same time, much Ooh. like the TV show when one side thing's happening. You know, what what you, type of game is it? What are we talking it's about? It's like uh, a retro 80s styled... Um, like RPG? RPG, yeah. Top down? Top down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously with modern technology behind it. So That's cool. Um, yeah, I'll... Oh. Have cool, cool. Finish it. I'm actually quite keen to play that Stranger Things game, even though I heard it was sort of just like one of those movie tie-in games where you don't really get... It is. Yeah, it's not super high quality, but you know what, we've come to the big part of the show, Julian, so can you please tell us, inform us, you've done the figures, you've worked out who <laughs> is winning. I've roughly done the figures, but there was a big battle of this competition. By the way, why don't we do the podcast standing up more? This looks fantastic. Yeah, this will show off my entire jumper. <laughs> yeah, look, look, I don't know if my work pants and shoes are really a tying in with the Avengers hoodie, oh, but it feels good, actually. A bit yeah, of a stretch. Yeah, all right. This is now a Pilates show. And, uh, I feel like I need to stand up too. This is um, all right. Anyway, I'm sitting back down. Uh, Julian, who um, have you decided is going to be winning our prize packs? Now, we've got... I understand we're going to give away one of the Dumbo hoodies now yeah. and the rest during the week. And They're we not are just Dumbo hoodies. Full Dumbo prize packs. Full Dumbo. Blu-ray. You just have to like us on Facebook and Instagram and details will come. 
So that's the way to do it. The winner of our Lion King prize back today, Richard Harrison. Congratulations. Oh, just because you said noise. So, uh, <laughs> just because you said. You get this drink bottle, the coffee cup, the notebook, uh, and an awesome bag as well. Uh, congratulations. Go and see the film. It's out now. It and is, and it was great. We gave it four, well, I gave it four stars. Four, Jules gave it three and a half. Uh, I think if you're a fan of the original movie, you're really going to like it. Um, and of course, if you haven't seen Dumbo yet, Make sure you enter in our prize giveaways this week because you can score yourself one of the Blu-rays, a bag, a hat, as well as a hoodie. And now, and Devin, Devin, you've uh, fought hard. You can have a Dumbo hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Thank you so we'll, much. Um, get that too. We will make sure to do that. Devin, make sure you send us a message. The same goes for Richard Harrison. Enjoy writing the lyrics to uh, <laughs> The Circle of Life in your new Lion King I ex We notebook. expect a photo. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm writing the lyrics to A Circle of Life. Richard, Richard um, the keep gut doesn't come with the pack. Oh, sorry. And, and it is uh, the drink uh, bottle. I'm sorry, the drink bottle is <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we don't have a price back to give away. <laughs> It's been a lot of fun on the show this week. Thank you so much for interacting with us so much in the comments. That is what we enjoy doing the most, to be honest, on this show. We really appreciate your time watching tonight. If you didn't win, we still have plenty of opportunities throughout the week. Thank you, Jules. Thank you, Dave. Good to have you back. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, Thanks, but I understand Mark. you're not going to be here next week. No, I'm in New Zealand snowboarding oh. next week. <laughs> but I'll be back again after that yeah. for the rest of the year. I feel like we have so many comeback parties for fish that it's, it's that's why I do it because it's always an event when I'm back here <laughs> <laughs> and thank you Mesa and thank you Jeff and thank you Lou he's downstairs which is why we had to yell he watches the show in another room we really do appreciate you watching and you make it all worth it 8pm uh, next week for our final episode of July <laughs>